Greetings, mavens of the macabre. Welcome to Mr. Macabre's Macabre Mansion. Today I bring you a conversation with a wonderful creator named Aidan Casserly, who specializes in the chilling, <laughs> the monstrous, and the somewhat incompetent monsters, specifically the mastermind known as Scapula. His epic is coming to an end. And I had a conversation with Mr. Casserly recently. I was not sure that I could participate as my true self. And as you can see, I shouldn't have worried, but that's between my therapist and me. <laughs> Enjoy this conversation with Aiden Casserly. Hey everybody, I am here with Aiden Casserly, who is artist uh i would you say storyboard artist you worked in animation but really why we're talking here is obviously from your dress uh you uh you spend a lot of time celebrating easter and and christmas no no okay uh, I, oh, oh easter all the time oh good pagan holiday we've got to celebrate the old spirits the things that the old gods that lay eggs in the grass for little children to find christmas too oh my god man Krampus used to be good, and then he, he went all Hollywood. He doesn't return my calls anymore. He won't share the children he kidnaps. I mean, come on, spread the love around. Uh, you know, I, it, it, I, I don't know if you're in Burbank, but I think that there's, you know, we have local ordinances against sharing kidnapped children, I, I think. I think. That's, that's too bad. Burbank, Burbank has a lot of uh, high quality uh, upper middle class children, you know. They're, oh, Totally. Yeah, they're much, they bathe more often, they're more well fed. I prefer that as opposed to, um, you know, some of the dirtier, scroungier kids. Well, all right, but, but let us get to your work before we uh, start, you know, uh, calling attention from, from law enforcement. Uh, <laughs> what you're here is, uh, is you have just finished, I, I'll call it an epic of, uh, I, I think we see the figures, uh, the character behind you, uh, mm -hmm. of Scapula, who is, uh, how would you describe him? Is he the world's best supervillain or? Oh, well, let's describe the world's right worst. There. Let's let's pull it out the jack o' lantern. There we go. Scapula. Scapula is also known as the world's worst villain. That's actually the name of one of the books here. If I can pull it out without making a mess. Yes, there we go. Scapula, world's worst villain. This is a series I've been doing since uh, ancient times. That would be 2007. This is the 15th year anniversary and just celebrated it by ending it which is a uh, you know leave, leaving a party early is always a smart thing to do so but i it, it's been a lot of fun doing this there have been a lot of uh creepy kids and wonderful weirdos who have been following along and i've loved every minute of doing it even when it comes to an end so i um for those of you out there who have heard of it i hope you've uh shared your comments before online i always love interacting with fellow strange people out there <laughs> you haven't well well, discover it now. Uh, well, you know, let's go. We're here at the end. Let's go back to the beginning. What uh, what what drove you to create and and uh, you know, well, do a fifteen year epic? Oh my goodness. Well, everybody gets everybody gets into comics when they realize that math and history class is goddamn boring, and then they start becoming cartoonists. Now, fifteen years ago, I was mostly just about you know a lot of a lot of hungry young artists who are applying to uh, comic studios and whatnot, and you know we don't always get in, and sometimes the ones who do aren't crazy about it. Blah 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 blah. And then you realize the best way to do something is to just do it yourself. Back in 2007, Scapula started off with just a little handmade zine, just something drawn with ballpoint pen, something photocopied, and it was so much fun to do that. I hope every young artist out there is just doing their own thing and doing it now and not waiting to be discovered, so to speak. I had just a blast doing it. And then after this, it became a web comic. For those of you who were on the internet, oh, a good decade or so ago, back in the days of like WordPress web comics and things like that, back when you had your own site, and you just updated um, by whatever schedule you went by. I was a lunatic, so I started off doing it weekly, and then I started doing it four days a week, and then after that, my brain blew out, and I just had to. <laughs> uh, I started doing it as comic book specials instead, which was a lot easier on my sanity. But you know, it's it was good mileage doing the web comic, and you meet a lot of good. I met a lot of really nice people there, fellow web cartoonists, um, comic book readers looking to discover something beyond the big two, and it was a lot of fun times. I really do miss those years, but. 
Yeah, and, and we we discussed him as the world's worst villain, and people can see his image behind uh, my memory. It's been a couple of years since I I had picked up one. I think bo both that you just showed those uh, uh, oversized volumes. Uh, that is it a, a Halloween mask that's stuck to his face. Um, actually, Scapula's story is that he had his face removed. Now, this is a man with a lot of issues, mm -hmm. as we've as we've come to discover in bits and pieces throughout the backstory told along these years. But in any case, this was a frustrated outcast, just miserable with his life, and he decided what's going to solve his problems is maybe he'll become a supervillain. To that extent, he had his face removed and replaced with this hard plastic shell. I'm going to mention that he had his face removed before the Joker did that, in case if anybody thought that was a monkey see, monkey do, because let's face it, that wasn't a great decision on DC's part, but it works for me. <laughs> Scapula becomes a supervillain, and he doesn't have the best of luck, but he keeps on trying, no matter how painful the setbacks may be, no matter what crippling defeats he may face. He's gathered together a group of fellow misfits and monsters that he's he takes under his wing, so to speak, even though... As we all know, supervillains and monsters don't always get together as well as they should, but in the end, outcasts only have each other to rely on. There you go. Uh, yes. So you obviously have been influenced by, I mean, we can see your wall behind you, which I just am, you know, gobsmacked and envious of all the, all the things. And we did awesome. discover uh, that we have a, a shared uh, love of for good or ill of, uh, you know, bad out of hell, uh, meatloaf and Jim Steinman and, and kiss. And we both apparently own personal copies, whether legal or not of me in the media of kiss meets the phantom of the, <laughs> of the park. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I thank you. That was jeans clean. Uh, you know that. Yeah. That, uh, I actually oh, Gene claims everything was his. He claimed this was his, he's going to claim scapula was his. No, no, no. I, that, that's the line. Isn't that what they say, I say about him? Jeans, jeans clean at one point when he just goes, Rrr. uh, you know, and, and I can say, I, I, I was a, a young kid watched that. They actually, the one time it was broadcast on NBC, I think a Saturday night movie, what else you going to do? But, uh, <laughs> was it on a double feature with the star? Wars holiday special no but it might as well have been <laughs> you're right i think we got to do that i think we have to bridge the gap between halloween and christmas in a way besides nightmare before christmas which is wonderful oh, you know but that's good yeah you're but, right. if, but if kiss but if kiss meets phantom in the park meets a uh, wookie life day that's that's gonna test and see who's the strongest fanboy among us to see who can sit through that yeah <laughs> It is a test of strength, but yeah. So, what were the the things? Obviously, we got eerie and creepy monsters, uh, famous monsters of Filmland, mm -hmm. and you know, what were the things that that you know went into the stew pot of your head and came out with with Scapula? Scapula owes its owes it to um, owes its existence to a lot of sources that inspired me. Um, we were mentioning a lot of rock stars and. You know, Meatloaf is great, Kiss is great. The number one influence I have is definitely a, a little man named Alice Cooper. Sure. And Alice was a tremendous influence, not only because his music was great, not only because he's a great showman, but I've always considered Alice Cooper to be a fantastic storyteller. And Alice never limited himself to one particular kind of story. Alice could be scary, Alice could be funny, Alice could be romantic or tragic and a lot of things. I definitely do think that that influenced Scapula a lot because it gave this Scapula was primarily a comedy, yes, but as the series went along throughout the years, it did start to take on different tones when I felt like telling different kinds of stories. There were romances, there were tragic romances, there were some pretty intense periods of um, like genuine horror outside of just horror influence. No, there were there were some stories that attempted to be scary. And I think a lot of that was. Uh, performers like Alice Cooper, um, comic artists that I admire a lot include. Uh, it looks like a it looks like a total 180 from someone dressed as flamboyant as me. But Steve Ditko was a tremendous influence, especially. Well, I see the creeper behind you. Oh well, <laughs> on the wall. So the creeper. I forgot about that. Yes. Yes. Right there. Ditko, um, the original Amazing Spider-Man was probably the biggest influence on Scapula. It's just the direction it took was instead of a struggling superhero, it was a struggling supervillain. And I think if you really look at the artwork and the stories, you can see a lot of Ditko's influence in there. Uh, Mad was a big influence, especially Wallace Wood, who was also 
an expert at jumping between being funny, being romantic, being scary, being sad, being, I mean, it's no secret that the man suffered, but that's also true that a lot of um, the best artists that I've ever seen were also ones who thought for themselves, no matter mm -hmm. what cost it took on them. So yeah, he was, you know, God rest his soul. But um, there, yeah, lots, lots of fantastic artists I've admired. Eric Powell of the Goon was obviously probably the closest thing in tone that I think you could compare Scapula to, except he, he's, a, he's a really goddamn good artist and a really good storyteller. And he's more popular than I am. So thanks a lot for that, Eric. That's not a blow to way to go. <laughs> but you take, a little, you take a little bit of everything from everywhere. Yeah. That's, I think that's how a lot of artists and performers find their style is, you know, you look at everything, take what works, make it your own. And yeah, and you, it. and you, as we started off saying, you've, you're bringing this to an end. Did you have a, an end game in mind when you started it? Some artists do, some artists don't. No, no. I mean, I'd like what a lot of the things with Scapula was, even though stories were prepared sometimes ahead of time, there was never really a big story arc. And that's something that I notice I see with a lot of would-be comic artists who are trying to make their own series but never get started is that they get a little too far ahead of themselves with the planning and the world building and things like that. And that's good. That's great to world build. It's a lot of fun. It's great to plan out your stories in advance, but sooner or later you have to do it. And a lot of people hold off on doing it too long because they think if I don't start off with a masterpiece, it's not worth pursuing. And that's like, this was the beginning. This started off as the 24-hour uh, comic that uh, Scott yeah. McCloud created. I got three pages in and I fell asleep. But that was three pages more than I had than I had um, before I did this book, which was just planning and planning and planning forever and not doing anything. So that's definitely a first bit of advice I could give to any hungry young artists or creators looking at this. Do something. Just get, get to it and do it and you know, you may not knock it out of the park. You're not going to be Frank Frazetta right off the bat, but you'll have you'll have had something that you can build upon from there and improve upon and have fun with, for God's sake. Yeah, I, I don't think that gets said enough to new creators. I mean, you, you know what's good in your head, and you're never as good as that person you admire. You know, the but that's because we didn't we didn't see their starts most of the time. Although we live in 2022, everything has been recorded. So yes, probably now there's no getting rid of it, but uh, even if you wanted to. So now that you're bringing this to an end, uh, you know, what happens next for you? What happens next for me is I don't want to try other sorts of things. Comics have been fantastic. Comics have been a lot of fun. And there's a part of me that's never going to quite give up comics. But at the same time, I also want to try out new mediums too. I would like to get back into independent animation, which is a humongous struggle, but anything worth doing is going to be a struggle to get those 10,000 hours of practice in to get to a point where you're happy with it. So yeah, animation would be great. I've been planning all sorts of other things, learning new programs, learning things that are genuine challenges to me. And that involves a lot of caffeine, a lot of swearing, you know, the usual creative process. But yes, of again, course. Just got to do it, so. Well, oh, that's that's excellent. And people can find uh, Scapula at AidenCasserly.com. That's correct. Yes. And where, where else can they get it? Um, the, my books, my online bookstore is an offshoot of the AidenCasserly.com portfolio. You can find the archives for the time being on the Scapula website, which is scapulacomic.com. There are a couple of exclusives that were done on Amazon. I don't want to pimp Jeff Bezos and his uh, big multi-dollar, multi-million dollar empire gobbling the planet, but there were a couple of uh, Patreon exclusive projects that were brought to uh, just simple uh, print on demand books on Amazon because everybody on Amazon is an author these days. But And uh, I, I love those covers because I just realized, okay, one there looks, it just was uh, tails calculated to drive you mad in, in <laughs> layout. You know, it just looked like those classics. So, okay. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to creepily caress the subscribe button to be sure you don't miss out on any ghoulish gifts from the fanboy planet crypt and who knows i may one day find my way back out of the catacombs and into dim light again <laughs>